some things, um, uh, you know, because of um, uh, my retirement, final final retirement, Marlene. <laughs> oh, I thought you were have been retired. Yes, I know. I know I've been retired. So, you know, <laughs> so um, finally, finally, uh, uh, I'm all settled and um, I'm, this is, this is it actually. So this is nice. Yeah. So, so as you can see, Nina, the everybody's beginning to arrive because they <laughs> they were just grabbing a bite to eat in this Monday faculty oh, no. meeting day. Yeah. Yeah. But I knew uh, they, you they, were going to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, thank you so much. That's that's um uh, that's going to make my presentation a bit um you know um difficult, all right. I think it's the word, right? Um, I'm hoping to meet the expectation, actually. Yes. So we're just giving them just a minute, and then we'll begin with the sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, I've been trying to get this. Uh, I don't have. I don't have subscription to PowerPoint on this um, uh, tablet. So that's why uh, the, the presentation is a bit limited. And I forgot my password for my um, uh, subscription. So um, I should have brought my laptop actually, but uh, I failed to do it. So anyway, so uh, we'll what have that's to make gonna, do with whatever is here. What that's gonna mean operationally is when uh, Dr. Loxon begins to show his presentation, he won't be able to see all of you and what is in the chat, but we will relay to him questions um, that occur along the way so that he can address them. He'll he'll only be able to yeah. see the presentation when he's speaking. We we tested it and that's what we determined. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the limitation. Yeah, I cannot even see any of you. I can only see Terry right now. So uh, pardon. Pardon, uh, yeah, and D, you know, you, it will have to be single, single um, slides. So I see. Um, That's single, fine. Single, yeah. So yes. D, it's it's one o three. So and a lot of folks have joined us. Perhaps mm -hmm. we could go ahead and begin with the introduction so that Dr. Loxon can go back to sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, shall I begin? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Greetings to all and welcome to our faculty learning circle for this month. I would like to present today an amazing scholar of caring and technology. And he is speaking to us from Baguio, the Philippines. He is Dr. Rosano, commonly known to us as Nino Loxon. He is a professor emeritus at Florida Atlantic University, Christine Lynn College of Nursing. He is also a professor of nursing at Tokushima University in Japan from 2014 to 2022. He authored the middle range theory of technological competency as caring in nursing published first in March of 2005 by Sigma. A Japanese translation was released in May of 2009 with a fourth printing in 2019. He has authored, co-authored and co-edited six books, six other books regarding nursing technology, caring and robotics. His interest in global nursing fosters the dynamic nature of human beings and of nursing. Dr. Loxon was a Fulbright scholar to Uganda and a Fulbright senior specialist in global and public health. He received the Edith Moore Copeland Excellence in Creativity Award from Sigma. He, was re he has received distinguished alumni awards in nursing from Silliman University and St. Paul's University in Dumagate, the Philippines. He also has received the Medallion of Honor in 2003 from the University of the Philippines. He was the inaugural recipient of an endowed chair in nursing 
from the University of Texas, distinguished professor of nursing at Florida Atlantic University, the first John F. Weimer distinguished professor. He was distinguished as a recipient of the Baelic Scientist Program Award of the Department of Science and Technology in the Republic of the Philippines. He holds a baccalaureate and master's degree in nursing from Silliman University in Dumagati City, the Philippines, and a doctor of philosophy in nursing from the University of the Philippines in Manila. He is a lifetime member of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering and was inducted as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing in 2006. Welcome Dr. Loxon to our faculty learning circle and the Ann Boykin Institute for the Advancement of Caring Science. I am pleased to present him today and he will be speaking with us about humanoid robots in nursing and healthcare. Dr. Loxon. Thank you very much, Dee. Thank you very much for the introduction. And um, uh, let me let me just say um, it is an opportunity to be with you all uh, today. And um, as I said, as an opportunity, uh, this makes me present with you, uh, especially uh, for 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 me in the Philippines. It's early morning, and for you, it's early afternoon. So, um, but thank you. As as I mentioned earlier, and I think Terry also mentioned that there that I have some limitations with the, with the PowerPoint presentation and the Zoom um, uh, um, platform uh, because of um, uh, subscription purpose, uh, subscription um, uh, limit, limitations. So let me just um, go ahead and share. When I share, I cannot see anyone. I can only see my, my slides. So please, um, I think uh, Terry gave the instructions that um, you can always uh, ask questions through the chat and she can she can monitor this all right so please do I would appreciate questions and any any points that you would like clarified hopefully I'll be able to do that uh, um, during this uh, presentation okay so thank you thank you so much so let me go ahead and share uh, uh, my presentation uh, by the way the title and I and uh, another um, uh, apology. Um, I'm using an older version of my presentation. I, I kind of updated some of the slides. Uh, so the title, for some reason, I cannot I cannot change. So D is right. Um, she she uh, she mentioned about uh, humanoid robots and and nursing uh, technology, but uh, this presentation this presentation is more about uh, technology, uh, technological competency as caring in nursing. Okay, so of course it will include uh, humanoid robots uh, in that in that sense. So, uh, okay, thank you. Nino, okay. just a gentle reminder to to include the audio before you share. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, let me. Yeah, this is a, this has a different thing. So let me just uh, find the thing. Um, share audio. Okay, audio is on. Okay. Uh, and, um, okay. So. We do uh, see your slides. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, wait, where is this? That review slideshow uh, from beginning. Okay, and uh, audio is on. Okay, so I'm good, all right. So. So these are the objectives of the presentation today. So I appreciate the images of nursing. I'd like to start with that. I described technologies and artificial intelligence in healthcare, um, robots and robotics in nursing, uh, how nursing can be practiced in order to remain relevant in the new era, right? Um, I hope we can, we can, we'll have time to talk about Anthropocene, Telepocene, Technopocene, and Capitalocene. Um, and the metaverse, right? Which is the, the current um, view of the world. And then you have, uh, and, uh, and ultimately, of course, uh, um, explain the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing. So uh, some of the images of nurses and nursing, uh, these are just uh, uh, a few of those. Uh, nursing is doing, okay, nursing is a profession and care being a female, char uh, 
and care being a female characteristic. And so this, this has uh, implications uh, as to who are, who are nurses and how nurses can, can practice nursing. Uh, it, uh, actually, the, the, the phenomenon being uh, addressed here is genderized uh, nursing practice. Right? So nursing is, is associated with past images, such as the lady with the lamp. Right? And nursing practice is about following physician's orders. And I think, um, especially in third world countries or developing uh, countries, uh, this still remains to be uh, uh, the image of the nurse. So public image, therefore, and the nursing identity seems to be a simple and straightforward concept, but there is more to nursing than this, than these images. Okay. So what is nursing? And um, we have we have descriptions. Um, and I don't have I don't want to belabor this because I think we have many uh, definitions of, of what nursing is and um, the basis of, of what nursing is from from the theory. Uh, is that um, nursing is an expression of caring, right? And so being technologically competent is being caring and that and nursing as caring as the basis for what uh, this theory is all about, okay? All right, so um, let me just move forward, all right? So technology, uh, technology-driven innovations. So um, um, this, this gives us the, the idea of where technology and how technology has influenced um, uh, contemporary um, uh, society, right? So there were more than one, a 180% rise in health tech and digital health investments and over 230% increase in pharmaceuticals and biotech investments. Yeah, that was in the past 10 years. The US healthcare is expected to top 5.34 trillion. This may have increased now, right? Shifting the healthcare industry's focus to value-based care from volume-based care. Data has become the new health currency. I think this is very important because we now address data science, big science, and that is where uh, technology has taken root and it has influenced a lot of how we, we do healthcare, right? Data-based uh, healthcare for that matter. So effective care delivery, enhanced clinical productivity, variability and waste reduction, and non-clinical efficiency. So nine emerging technologies reported by the McKinsey report include uh, connected and cognitive devices, right? electroceuticals, right? and this is something very interesting, I think, um, uh, for now and in the future, targeted and personalized medicine, robotics, 3D printing, um, big data and analytics, as I mentioned earlier, AI, and we now have different types of AR, we now have um, super uh, super AI, actually, blockchain, um, uh, NFTs, right? To mention a few, robotic process automation. Each of these technologies have immense potential in terms of improving the way care is received and provided, right? So uh, that's why I needed to mention that. And I think it, it provides the foundation for how technological competency as caring in nursing can, can progress or evolve and uh, make nursing uh, remain relevant in the future. So technologies that are transforming nursing, um, these are just some of the few. Um, uh, this is as far as March uh, 2019, right? You have electronic health record, we still do this. And I think um, um, a lot of studies have been conducted about um, electronic health records, all right? And uh, how it has, it has influenced. This, this is technology and it uses AI right? And, and machine learning for that matter, right? And mobile communication systems, we now have uh, all these gadgets, all these devices um, uh, influencing telehealth, telenursing, right? Uh, Patient-generated health data systems from devices such as smartphones and smartwatches. And um, this has influenced how uh, we monitor um, uh, physiological changes. Um, and so uh, we become aware and actually uh, nurses and healthcare uh, practitioners become adept at determining and monitoring uh, human science and human care, right? Using these devices. So real-time location systems. So uh, currently, like I always mention, um, today we are dependent on GPS, right? To go anywhere, right? And so um, perhaps we can utilize this. And I think it's being used, especially for wanderers, patients who wander, uh, and so uh, we may have to be using all these uh, locators. Uh, we now have 
moved from using um, uh, locators, all right, um, uh, from from uh, prisoners, all right. We have those um, um, uh, anklets, as they call it. So we may have to do something that's that's similar in order to to provide opportunities for us to be able to uh, understand and know where and how we can care for patients who wonder, right? Smart alarm technology. And we need to really be very conscious about this because there has to be a lot of, um, um, I would say, concern, especially for intensive care uh, patients. Uh, all these alarms, alarm fatigue, right? Is, is, a, is a phenomenon. And um, oftentimes we become used to, nurses become used to all these alarms that they don't really mean anything anymore. And then you have the patients, right? Or persons under your care, the persons who are a nurse who listens to all these alarms and they cannot do anything about it, okay? So we have to reduce false alarms, okay? And this is one of these, this is uh, one of the concerns that we may have to be uh, aware of because we now have a lot of technologies used not only in intensive care units, but even in the regular units in hospital care systems. We can also do this as far as hospital-based or uh, home care services for that matter. We need to really be conscious about it, okay? Uh, decide primary roles for care robots, right? Measuring and monitoring mobility and activity, safety care, reduction in workload. This was the probably the initial um, concern as far as nursing systems, right? So that we can reduce workload. We have to utilize all these um, technologies um, uh, so that nurses can concentrate and actually uh, perform or practice nursing, uh, talking about hospital care nursing at the bedside, right? But you, you realize that there are always consequences um, uh, uh, having all these technologies available. So um, today, a lot of a lot of, of my friends actually who, who practice nursing kind of complain that uh, many of the nurses just stay at the nurses station, uh, looking at monitors. Okay, one or looking at their cell phones and then just you know uh, um, using their Facebook, uh, though they do their social media thing because they have now more time because all these technologies are monitoring. Uh, their patients, okay? So uh, nursing time, uh, uh, there was a study conducted, document 11.5% reviewing the employee, uh, the, um, um, what do call this? Uh, electronic health record rather, was 9.1%, patient assessment and interaction, 8.9%, in-person communication with healthcare workers about patients or patient care, 7.5%, and patient care and budget procedure, 7.2%. Overall, nurses were observed to spend an average of 33% of their skill of their shifts interacting with technology. Right, so at least we still have about perhaps um, 63 or 60, 66% uh, or more, uh, hoping that this is all about uh, interacting with patients. Okay. So robotic use in healthcare, uh, um, there are five areas. Okay, this is in relation to the to how robots are being used in in healthcare uh, settings, right? Personal care robots, mobility and transfer robots, cognitive and emotional robots, nursing assist, and care robots in palliative and home care settings. These are just some. Um, this was mentioned um, um, in the in this article that I have here, right? Uh, Journal of Korean Gerontological Nursing. So. Uh, in 2018, that was that's what five years ago. So today, there may be more areas for for robotic use in healthcare. In 2023, I'm, I'm still looking for um, references uh, that will help me um, advance um, some of the data that I have here. So uh, these are uh, common, um, I would say, definitions or descriptions of what anthropomorphic intelligent machines are, right? So anthropomorphic, like like human beings, all right? Um, so we have robots, humanoid and, or androids, auto, automatons, and I kind of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, make a joke of the automatons. I said, so it says here, a machine that operates on its own without the need for human control, or, and this is some, that's why I put it in, in um, italics, a person who acts like a machine without thinking or feeling and, we can probably ask ourselves this question, are we 
one of those automatons when we practice our nursing, right? So, and then it, of course we have the intelligent machines, deep learning systems, uh, et cetera, okay. So uh, I kind of like this um, uh, caption I, I, I copied somewhere, right? So due to the shortage of robots, some of our workers are human and may react unpredictably when abused. So we have to be very careful, okay? All right, okay. Anyway, so uh, dimensions of technologies in healthcare. Uh, I kind of um, um, had a classification of, of these uh, technologies. So these are some of the technologies that I think um, some of the classifications where almost all technologies can fit. Technology is completer of human beings, technology as machine technologies, technologies that mimic human beings, okay? And so I have so I have all those examples. I, I kind of um, uh, um, are, are more concerned about the, the, the first one, technology as completer of human beings, because now we're doing a lot of replacements, replacement of parts, either um, mechanical, which are prosthetics, or organic, which are transplanted organs, okay? So they, they in itself, uh, complete the, the person, okay, and so they they and it's uh, even if they're organic are considered as technology, right? Okay, and then technology is machine technologies. We have all these gadgets, uh, and now we are talking about humanoid nurse robots, right? Which are those that mimic human beings. Um, these are <clears throat> these are all videos. Uh, um, uh, I don't think they play well uh, given the given the given the connectivity. But um, I think we can we can always view this uh, in, in the future. I, I just have some examples uh, here, so I just I won't um, don't worry about it. Okay, these are all available on YouTube, and I think when you probably have a chance, uh, just uh, uh, look at uh, uh, humanoid nurse robots. And I am very particular about the word nurse. That's why um, I have other videos later on that will kind of illustrate what I mean by um, humanoid nurse robots and the global reach that have been uh, inf influenced by this uh, global, um, of these humanoid nurse robots, okay? So healthcare robots and future developments, uh, these are some of the things that I, that I think we should be very concerned about. <clears throat> um, if nursing practice is simply doing, okay? Which is one of the images of nursing that I mentioned earlier, uh, well, that is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, completion of tasks. Humanoid nurse robots can practice nursing in more efficient, precise, and predictable ways because they'll be programmed by human beings, right? And so we can we can uh, we can program in the future, or maybe now we will be able to do that. Uh, and the advancement of all these uh, robots are are all about what are what are the technologies available. Like I have this article: the quantum computers uh, compete for supremacy. We now have quantum computers that do not um, depend on the ones and zeros. They now are, are programmed based on complexity science and chaos theory or right? unpredictability. And so they have moved, right? Uh, that's why they're called quantum computers. Uh, one of the main concerns that, that have been addressed um, probably in about the last five years was um, computers, um, uh, humanoid uh, computers or humanoid robots, for that matter, may not may not have the uh, the sensitivity. But you have to understand that uh, sensors and uh, sensors are now becoming more and very sensitive. Even video, okay, video capacity cameras are now becoming very sensitive, and they provide high definition uh, imaging. Okay, so we are moving, and so. <clears throat> Dr. Tanioka has kind of projected um, how we will be looking at um, uh, the singularity, uh, technological singularity by, by Ray Kurzweil, right? And so um, we, we think about this as, as uh, influencing our nursing in the future in order to remain relevant, right? Um, but the main question I'm, only, I'm going to ask here is how, right? And so um, my answer to that would be, um, <clears throat> utilize the story, utilizing uh, technological competency as caring in nursing as, as the nursing um, foundation, as the nursing perspective through which we can remain relevant in the future. So, but I will explain that later on, okay? Hopefully, okay. Um, okay. All right, so <clears throat> we now, excuse me. 
<coughs> Sorry, let me just take. So now I'm going to the to the theory itself, all right? Because remember, I asked the question: so how can we remain relevant in the future, given all these technologies? And I think the timeliness of the theory is being served, uh, has been served, or is being served actually. Um, uh, and the pandemic has made us realize, made us more aware of how technology can, can influence and, and advance our practice of nursing and, and be relevant. Uh, I know I'm using the word relevant, so, so common uh, since I've started this presentation, but that is really a, 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 a good concern to be, to be uh, aware. But so anyway, so I have five assumptions of theory. Persons are caring by virtue of their humanness, and that is uh, from Boykin and Schoenhofer. Um, the ideal of wholeness is a perspective of oneness, and uh, this oneness perspective is very important for us to consider because of the idea that um, the idea of completeness. Uh, remember, technology uh, being completed. Right? Do we really need to complete uh, human beings, or are they always human? Based on the idea of uh, wholeness, okay? Regardless of missing parts, they are always human, right? And so knowing persons as a, uh, as a multidimensional process, right? And that uh, I will mention later on uh, as, the, as the practice of, of nursing, knowing persons as caring. So knowing persons is a multidimensional process and technologies of health and nursing are elements for caring. This influences our idea of what is technological competency as caring. <clears throat> and then nursing as a discipline and, and a professional practice. And that is again from Boykin and Jennifer. And the idea is that um, have, it is our responsibility okay, uh, to move and to practice our profession. So develop our own body of knowledge in order, in order for us to, under, to be, to be uh, realized and recognized as a professional practice, as a vital and integral to human health and well-being. Okay. Right, so we should be uh, advancing our own uh, knowledge of uh, uh, human care, right? So knowing persons as caring, this is this is the this is the process of nursing that I was going to talk to you about. It's the dynamic nursing process. So um, there are three: um, uh, technological knowing, mutual designing, and participative engaging. So um, how do we practice nursing using the theory? It's, it's, it's this, and I call this process as knowing persons as caring. And that is based on the first, um, on the first on one of the theories, uh, one of the assumptions of the theory, which is no, uh, persons are caring by virtue of their humanness. So all nursing focuses on the idea that we are caring persons. So in our practice of nursing, we want to, we want to know the person as caring. And how do we do that? We have, um, we have these uh, processes, technological knowing, using technologies to know persons as caring. In shared relationships, express as appreciating persons' humanness and participating in dynamic caring relationships. Mutual designing uh, is a process in which both the nurse and the one nurse together create caring relationships, which fosters, affirms, supports, and celebrates the person's desire to live meaningful lives, right? And that is, that is what we, uh, we aim for together is uh, living a person, living the meaningful lives. What is meaningful to the person is what is important to us. And the participative engaging is what happens is a simultaneous relating with the other. It is the continuous and recursive knowing of persons as caring. So this is how we practice nursing. And my hope is that uh, knowing persons as caring using using technologies. Uh, would uh, would make us remain uh, would would make us relevant uh, in the future remaining relevant in the future right so this is how we practice nursing in order to remain relevant in the future <clears throat> so this is the, a monodimensional uh, view of um, of um, a figure of how we how I envision the idea of the universal technological domain and. Um, I'm beginning to think, um, based on our discussion with Dr. Schonefer um, uh, months ago, uh, about the idea of the meta paradigm of nursing as having four domains, right? And I was thinking about the universal technological domain as probably as perhaps the fifth, but I, I have not written about it yet. And I would challenge anyone to perhaps really uh, look at that, 
because um, the universal technological domain is 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 uh, one of the uh, domains of um, the meta paradigm of nursing, perhaps if we're going to use uh, faucets, um, um, meta paradigm of nursing. All right. So anyway, so what happens in in in, in knowing persons as caring is um, so we have um, all these uh, um, aspects uh, or elements, and so knowing persons of caring as caring is the process and the nursing encounter is where the relationship of uh, the person the nurse and the person being nursed uh, practicing uh, knowing persons are scaring they travel okay and this is a, a mobius right a mobius uh, as we all know is a mathematical structure where there is no beginning and there's no end so if you look at this is it, it, it is carefully um, um, presented here and um, I think it's it's uh, it makes sense every time I look at it uh, that in fact um, it challenges us. It meaning nursing challenges us as to how we come to know persons as caring. Right. All right. So um, I'd like to put that in action. So here is uh, an example. Uh, this is how it's supposed to be unpredictable, right? But uh, the limitation of this of this program is that there seems to be some some um, uh, program it goes one way um, or the other right but it's supposed to be uh, rotating within itself because it is knowing persons as caring regardless of uh, of uh, occasion right or situation right so I think uh, my music did not play but it's okay all right okay all right so um, excuse me. Um, this is just an example of how uh, we relive um, our practice of nursing. So uh, in the practice of nursing being knowing persons as caring. So um, uh, let me just read this. One of my patients requested a new IV on her opposite arm, even though the one she had, she had was safely infusing her IV fluids. I was extremely busy, but I knew that her IV would not get changed until much later, if at all. As she, as she change was occurring and she did not have veins that were easily accessed. I requested for the vein finder instrument and successfully inserted a new IV. My patient was so happy and told me that no one else had been able to get a vein on the first try. It seemed like a simple task, but it made such a difference to her. I can appreciate that through competent use of the vein finder instrument, I was able to allow my patient to use her dominant hand instead of limiting her range of motion because of the IV location. So this is some of the explanatory analysis I figured uh, using knowing persons as caring, right? So she was able to live a more whole and meaningful life through the use of her dominant hand. This was so simple an act and so moment changing for her and also for me. So the technological knowing right, was competence in using the viewfinder and mutual designing shared relationship during the IV insertion. It's, it's, a, it's a shared relationship. Um, um, I, I, Using using Boykin and Shona first uh, nursing situation if if you if you if you can all right the shared relationship between the nurse and the person being nursed all right um, uh, we're expressions of oneness right the mutual appreciation of a life changing situation which is the participative engaging okay so um, I thought this would be a, a good example of how we can uh, relive and communicate uh, how knowing personal caring is lived okay. All right, so future research uh, for SAI, uh, I, I still I focus on two uh, uh, phenomena. Um, it's caring for and being cared for, right? So experiences of nurses caring for persons with technologies. And you will notice uh, publications, have, uh, research has been done and published on this, on this phenomenon, right? I live experiences of persons being cared for. And that's, uh, this is also another phenomenon that has been studied. Um, a, a example of uh, experiences of persons being cared for with technologies are what is it like to be a person uh, in intensive care unit, okay, with all these gadgets, living through these uh, technologies. What is it like, right? And, uh, and um, you can see publications about this, uh, especially from Thailand. Uh, Dr. Waraporn Kongsuan has studied this with her, with her um, uh, graduate students as well. Um, Experiences of nurses caring for persons with technologies has also been uh, studied uh, uh, as well. 
so ethics and technological dependence right so what what is what is is it right or wrong okay good moral is good or bad so but what is it is it right and wrong using these technologies and being dependent on it all right so these are some of the basic questions that you may want to to study cloning bionic parts and experience of being with right design and development of instruments and this um this particular uh, research foci or this focus rather uh, is being studied in intensely by uh, dr um, tetsuya tanioka in japan he has had uh, he has developed a lot of instruments um both theoretical practical uh, uh instruments um, grounded in uh, the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing. And so testing of instruments to measure patient experience with technologies, right? Uh, genetics and genomics, um, and the future of hu humans as post-humans. And that I think is a uh, kind of a challenging um, research focus. And I hope uh, given, the, um, given the emphasis on uh, genetics and genomics uh, today, uh, this will be picked up and kind of uh, studied more, uh, uh, in, uh, more, right? Okay. So burnout phenomenon and the perspective use of robots in the practice of nursing, because we are we are especially today we don't have a, um, there's a lot of um, a nurse um, I would say uh, not many nurses are available to practice nursing, right? In in especially in hospital settings. So we get burned out. And should we be employing um, healthcare robots to take the place and help us in our practice? Yeah. Will humanoid nurse robots help us to practice uh, our nursing? Um, given the given the AI, uh, the machine learning, the, the the big data, the data science, um, influencing how we care for persons. Will we, as as, nurse, as human nurses, be dependent on them, and or will we be um, uh, enslaving uh, these healthcare robots? Okay, so these these are some of the issues, and uh, I think these are these are ethical issues that we may need to really be uh, concerned about. Another very important um, uh, issue uh, about robotics in nursing is security, as we all know. Uh, hacking is is very important and because they're computers they can easily be hacked okay because they're programmed hopefully with quantum computers this may be uh this may be reduced uh but how i still uh i have yet to find a research study that will um tell us how we can uh increase security for quantum computers uh, given that they're not uh based on the analog uh, on the uh, ones and zeros okay Nursing administration calls to care for nurses in high-tech environments. Okay, how can nurse administrators uh, influence human care um, with the with um, with uh, administrative uh, policies, rules, and regulations? And then, of course, the universality of technological competencies caring in varying nursing settings and cultures. Uh, how is technology expressed in cultures other than so other than ours, for example? Uh, um, we can we can look at um, uh, uh, tribal uh, tribal uh, practices and how they influence uh, what what they mean by nursing, for example. Right? Uh, I know it has it all has something to do with technologies. Yeah. Uh, okay, these are some of the publications. Uh, of course, this is probably until twenty twenty. So I have not updated this. Uh, this is just uh, some some uh, ways to to show you that it. Um, research studies have been conducted, right, and ongoing for that matter. Um, these are the uh, <clears throat> this this would have been a good um, video presentation because I kind of um, was able to get uh, examples of um, uh, healthcare robots and what what what. Uh, what interested me was the idea that they were they called these robots as nurse robots okay so again it goes back to the idea of what are well, what is nursing how is nursing perceived in other cultures in other uh, in other nations in other um, countries right so much so that they call these types of robots as nurse robots so what is nursing then how is nursing being practiced so that was how i uh, i thought mm, we need to really revisit the idea and the image of the nurse, right? Yeah, if you, I don't know, one of the video series from Thailand, and you can see a, a 
a humanoid robot from Thailand wearing a cap, right? And wearing a certain uniform, right? And so uh, it was, it was, to me, it was funny, but actually it was a bit uh, very concerning because that was how the image, uh, the nurse, right? Um, okay. I, it's not the end yet, sorry. Uh, I just had to do that to, to get out of uh, the videos. So challenges, okay, robots and human work, right? This is, this is in 2019, you have technology. How do you build a culture that can evolve as the technology evolves? Okay, this is a, a challenge for the skills. How organizations place people at the heart of their automation plans? And I think this is very important for nurses. Many times we become end users. We do not participate in the development of technologies. And um, especially in the development of healthcare robots in the future. But um, um, Osaka, uh, Kyoko Osaka and, and, and her team has actually provided recommendations on how nurses can, can, be, can influence the development of healthcare robots in the future. And it has been, it has been published, it's available online. So you can, you can search for that uh, article, okay? Diversity, equal access to AI and automation across work for, workforce, right? And so um, in, some, in some countries, they will have all these healthcare robots available. Um, and we, we started with uh, simulation technology, for example, all these mannequins, right? And um, so other countries, the third world countries are following suit and then they have all this and it has become part of nursing education, right? Uh, but I always ask the question, how are we translating uh, developing skills, um, developing uh, nursing skills for that matter, into, into actual nursing practice in healthcare settings. Okay. Um, I have yet to see um, a study that, that really looks at the translation from the perspective of the patients, for example, or from the persons being nursed, right? Um, is there, do they, do they see a difference between uh, a nurse who is educated using uh, simulation technology or a nurse who is not, right? Uh, I don't know if it matters, but I think to me, in order to make uh, to create more value for simulation technology, we may have to really provide this um, uh, information, okay? Authenticity, openness to using automation and realist realistic potentials. <clears throat> when I was in Indonesia, one question being raised or what that was raised was, do we need, um, do we need robots in Indonesia, right? Um, healthcare robots, for that matter, right, or or humanoid uh, humanoid robots, humanoid nurse robots, for that matter, and I think um, well, my quest, my answer to that question was that um, it depends on how you look at um, workforce. Okay, how do you have nurses who can practice nursing in Japan? Uh, this is this is a, a challenge because we do, we have limited um, uh, human 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 nurses. And I think in some some other developed countries, this is also a big problem, and so they resort to robotics and and, and nursing, and um, so um, the authenticity uh, of of the of the ways by which we can um, use automation and be re uh, be realistic about the potentials of um, humanoid nurse robots in the future. So resilience, creating a culture of responsiveness to change and readiness for automation. Now all this, um, um, you may ask. So what has the tech, what has the theory got to do with all these robots and and um, uh, humanoid nurse robots? But my, my idea is how is uh, technological competency as caring expressed by humanoid nurse robots? Can they? Um, in fact, there has been an issue about um, uh, caring robots versus healthcare robots, right? So what do we really mean by caring? Okay, is it caring as an act? Okay. Uh, which is a verb or caring as a noun, which is the science of, um, of, of nursing. And so how are we going to um, uh, see the integration or the relationship between humanoid nurse robots who can be programmed to practice, um, to, not to practice, to, to perform uh, nursing versus um, human, human nurses? How are, these, how are they going to be expressing the care uh, in ways that is appreciated as caring? Okay. So uh, again, it's a, it's a challenge uh, for, for us, uh, especially scholars of, the, of caring science and, and uh, technology uh, in the future. Okay, so um, 
this is actually from, from uh, Dr. Shonafer. So um, and I think this is very important. And I have uh, Martha Rogers here and and the uh, uh, I don't know, it's one of those uh, universal pictures, okay, pictures of the universe. Um, talking about universe, you know very well we're talking about nowadays, uh, we're talking about the metaverse, right? Uh, all multiverse, not universe anymore, right? So as always, nursing transforms the tools, nursing the means. The end remains the same, nurturing persons as caring persons, individually, in families, in small and large groups, in communities, locally, regionally, globally, and intergalactically. Okay, So how will we nurture persons as caring in the ever-evolving universal technological domain? Right. How will we continue to nurture knowing, alternating rhythms, hope, courage, trust, honesty, humility, compassion, competence, competent, confidence, and commitment, etc. Right? At all, or not at all, etc. In new ways and in new environments. This I think is a, is a critical thing to, to to remember. In new ways and in new environments. I think this is what cannot be lost. Okay. That, in my opinion, is how nursing remains viable, relevant by continuing to be nursing by continuing to devise new ways of nurturing persons as caring. If some of us adapt to tools of engineering, good right, or fine, we have always adapted the tools of other disciplines, medicine, psychology, ministry, social work, economics, management, etc. Okay, thanks. That was one of the comments of Dr. Shonofer to one of my questions about remaining relevant in the future. And I think it really makes sense how this, uh, it captures the whole idea of what it, what what I was asking and what uh, the the future holds for us. Okay, um, so the end of my uh, presentation. Okay, and I think we're we're okay. All right. So as technology advances at breakneck speed, so must nursing in designing and developing tools to facilitate, not implement, a disciplinary practice that continues to reflect its natural relevance as integral to the attainment and maintenance of human health and well-being. So I hope this will uh, be uh, a challenge to, to, to us, right? The scholars of nursing, okay? And how we can make nursing remain relevant uh, to now and in the future, okay? So these are the references and thank you very much. Dr. Luxon, if you would stop sharing so that we could see your video, that would be wonderful. And the only comment yeah. so far in the chat is um, Dr. Marianne, Marianne Levitt um, posted a YouTube about bilateral arm transplant as representative of yes. tech as a completer of human beings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, uh, I can I still remember uh, Valerie Grummy's uh, uh, Valley Grammy, right? Grammy. Yes, that's Grummy. correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, uh, she, she, she was. A, she, she is. I think, or she still is a transplant coordinator. And we, we discussed about. Um, actually, I got the idea of uh, replacement of parts uh, from the, the organic portion of it uh, from from our discussion with Valerie, and that was very important for us. And yes, uh, it can be uh, as completer of parts from an organic perspective. So. Um, that's that's one of one of the important things. Yeah, thank so, you. Uh, uh, that was Dr. Dr. Levitt. Levitt. Yes, yeah, so invite you all to come back with us and turn your cameras on now yes. that Dr. Luxon, um is no longer sharing his screen. So you you're free to dialogue, ask questions. Discussions. Good afternoon. First off, I want to say Sabina. hi, Dr. Luxon. This is Debbie. Wanted hi, to Debbie. So glad to see you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Shanifer, Sabina, you you wanted to talk. Oh, I wanted to. Uh, Nino, this was a masterful presentation. I wish, Thank you. <laughs> I wish every nurse in the world could hear this and then have the time to uh, reflect and uh, integrate what you've shared. I, I wonder, um, we have uh, we have a colleague in Portugal, uh, 
Candida Dural, who's yes. working with sound. And you're a consultant uh -huh. on that project. And, and since you mentioned sound, you know, as a, yes. as a phenomenon, could you tell us a little bit about that project? Yeah, um, actually, I haven't heard from her um, after we our initial discussion. Um, we have not, not really um, moved forward with it. I mean, maybe she did, but I have not been uh, uh -huh. consulted about it. But uh, that is a, a very important um, idea, uh, voice voice and sound um, uh, as, as technology and how it can influence um, uh, human science and human care, if you like to put it that way. Yeah. But I have not really uh, consulted with her. I haven't uh, heard from her uh, since our initial discussion, uh, Savina. The, the uh, initial uh, research, as I understand it, and what she hoped you would join them in continuing, has they found some sort of instrument that measured uh, sound and the source of sound in a patient's room and... Uh, they did some studies and determined that uh, actually most of the noise in a patient's room came from staff members. <laughs> I, I, I would think so. Yeah, and I think that's 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 uh, that is a laudable, uh, and I think it's a uh, I would say a a how would say valuable. I think that's the word I was looking for. A valuable research study because we tend to. Uh, I think the idea is we tend to forget that there's a person in within the system and we talk. Uh, I'm in a hotel right now and um, I can I can hear people talking in the hallway. I mean, uh, and, and it, it is bothersome actually. And how much more in, 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 in patient rooms, right? When, when nurses and physicians um, come in and um, they, they talk and they probably unnecessary, unnecessary noise that's... Um, that's in, in involved in the in the environment of of, of, of care. Yeah, I, thought I hope, I hope she will. About... I hope she will contact me. Uh, oh, I'm sure you know, she will. Uh, She's, yeah. you know, she moves yeah. rather slow pace. But I thought it was cool that nurses uh, located this instrument that is very ah. inexpensive and very easy to manage as a mm. research tool to use in uh, the study yes. of sound. Yeah, um, talking about instrumentations for research, um, there is after, thank you Sabina for that. Um, there is uh, there is this instrument that's available on Amazon actually to measure uh, EEG, right? Sound, right? You hear sounds and then of course, how it influences your your brain and using, using all these, um, uh wavelengths okay and um, i think it's a it's a good um uh instrument perhaps to, to look at how how sound um uh can can influence um the the perception and reaction of um of persons um in certain settings you know and i think um, i as i still will know perhaps um i my my dissertation was about music on uh, the effect of preferred and um, uh, image guided imagery music on post-operative pain. So I'm really very interested in sound. So, uh, so and I, anyway, that's, that's another technology that we need to really uh, explore, right? Thank you. So um, Dr. Valentine, another, Kath Kathleen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great Kathleen. To see you. Yes. Hi, great to see you. And Hi, Kathleen. For, hi. hi. Wonderful, wonderful presentation. Um, I just wanted to speak uh, a moment Thank with you, you about uh, relevance, nursing relevance. And yes. um, I don't know if others on the call who may be here from the US and, and elsewhere have experienced that post pandemic, uh, we've stopped banging pans uh, for um, excellence in nursing. Um, but we've also um, mm. deconstructed our governance structures for nursing within healthcare systems and marginalized um, academic structures for nursing within um, academic settings. So mm. I'm curious. Thank you. I'm curious how others may be perceiving or not perceiving um, that 
uh, dynamic. You know, uh, some mm. people have said to me, um, <clears throat> enough of being the most respect respected profession, time to have you be properly in your place. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a, a very big concern. I even here, uh, when I was in Japan or uh, in, in the Philippines, I always that I always asked the question. So we were superheroes during the pandemic. What now, right? And I think uh, how it has translated uh, and and the effect of being superheroes, right, during the pandemic. Uh, has has to has to influence how we are being perceived and imaged in uh, uh, and valued in in healthcare settings. And I think Dr. Valentine, as uh, as you are studying all this and are um, deconstructing how uh, administration of nursing and the practice of nursing is done in healthcare settings, um, can be can be more realized and recognized. Uh, I think it's it's more important uh, that we uh, we do um, uh, publish. Uh, I think. Publication, that's another major concern that I have. Um, I have yet to see um, uh, more uh, nursing studies uh, uh, published in, in newspapers because uh, a lot of people, I think, when I say newspaper, it doesn't have to be paper. Uh, you know, <laughs> we, don't, we don't read uh, as much uh, newspapers anymore, but they're done online. So we can, we can, we can publish or we can share uh, disseminate uh, uh, current uh, research studies, right? So that we we can influence more um, some of those uh, policymakers uh, uh, in in um, in how uh, nursing can be can be realized, uh, so that we can remain relevant, um, uh, continue to remain relevant now and in the future. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Kathleen. Thank you. Good to you see know, you. Um, Mary Ellen Wright, Doctor Doctor Wright had 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 her hand up. I think she wanted yes, to speak. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I getting back to sound, and I, I don't want to take away from what Kathleen just said, because there's just so much richness in both of your Hi, comments. Mary Ellen. That topic. Hi, Nino. Um, but I just wanted to say, I, I have a sound study on sounds in the NICU with the, um, combined with Dr. Susan O'Hara and the, oh. and the uh, College of Architecture. And we were really looking at, and we measured frequency of sounds of the, of the machinery around the infants mm. and how an individual oh. machine exceeds the guidelines uh, of sound by the American Academy of Pediatrics and by the World Health Organization. So your point on sound is well taken. And yeah. then you exponentially add the environmental sounds and our voices and all the other things that happen to it. So that measurement of those is very, very interesting in the environment. And it also relates yes. to the nursing environment, mm. what occupational sounds we are being exposed to and in our own health. Um, so we're trying to um, continue yes. to contribute to the guidelines yes. um, that don't have all of these categories in them yet. And we really need research to contribute to those that are making the guidelines of, of environments of care. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, just an, 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 in addition to that, um, <clears throat> from a nursing uh, perspective, uh, we, we, we talk about environment, right? But um, it's one of the domains of the metaparadigm of nursing that is that, that has not been written much about. But when we talk about environment, there's, it's one of the confusing uh, it has many interpretations uh, we talk oh, we have we have studied person person nursing uh, and health but environment has not been well studied i think and um, we attempted to do this we wrote a, a discussion paper um, me and uh, two of my colleagues here in the philippines and i think sabina also reviewed it um, before we send it out um, Yes, yeah, so we send it to nursing inquiry. It's about space and place, right? And this came out of uh, the pandemic again. You know why? How? Because because of all the chaotic things that has happened, and so we needed the space and the place. So it had it. Um, I looked at. Oops, he's frozen for a moment. Let's hope he comes back because. 
We weren't sure about our internet connection. And then there you are. Internet. We lost you for just a moment, Nino. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Sorry. Brown, Dr. Brown has a hand up. Um, oh, Raquel, okay. do you want to speak to Dr. Loxon? Sure. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Great presentation. Thank you, I, Raquel. I, I, I was listening um, to a lot of the things you said, and you mentioned in the beginning that data has become the new health care currency. And yes. you talked about the relationship with the technology and mm. um, the person, personhood. Yes. And I'm, I'm curious. I don't know how much it costs to build a robot that does the job that a nurse is do versus how much a nurse is paid. But uh, I noticed the data as well indicated that nurses were spending more than twice the amount of time with the technology than they did with the patient so our nurses then doing themselves a disservice yeah uh spending so much time with more time with the technology than with the patient mm. um you know that that's that's a very good question um raquel and and the idea is that since we are um we are now using a lot of technology uh technology has the idea of technology being that uh, it's supposed to help us in our in our practice of nursing, right? So we spend a lot of time uh, uh, mastering the technology, right? Um, so one of the one of the main issues is that, that we do not participate in the we are not asked to participate in the development of these technologies, right? And so uh, we need we are always end users, so we get to know how, how it's being how how it how to use it, so on so on so. On. But if we are um, uh, all these research and development um, tech technological companies, um, if, they, if, I were, if I were them, I would ask nurses who are the end users, how are we going to make this more efficient and convenient for you so that you will spend more time with the patient rather than spend more time on the technology, right? And that's a very, very good question. So we need, and, and uh, the, the the article I mentioned to you earlier was about developing um, um, humanoid nurse robots, but it should be on all technologies, right? So maybe somebody, uh, maybe you can probably write something about uh, how recommendations as to how um, uh, these tech companies can, uh, can, can uh, gain from having uh, nurses who are the end users influence the development of their uh, technologies. So uh, thank you, yes. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Smith is wanting to dialogue with you. <laughs> sure. Hi, Marlene. Hi, Nino. And you, know, you always give us so much to think about. And I really appreciate thank any you. time that you present because I think it stimulates at least my thinking all the time. But um, <laughs> thank you. One thing that, um, that I kind of, my, my, what do you call it? Hackles get up when I hear when I hear <laughs> the word humanoid nurse nurse robot. And I think we've talked about that before at, yes. at Summer Academy. And yes. uh, I know that that Savina and Anne have introduced uh, a model of kind of in the uh, dance of caring persons that the the um, healthcare robot becomes an assistant to the nurse for some, perhaps those doing um, activities mm. that, we, that we've talked about. And um, I think it's so easy because as you said, the image of nursing is doing. So it's easy for people to say, okay, well, you know, robots can do that. They can take over right. that. But, but exactly. again, it sells us short for who we really are that that nursing is a discipline and it's, it's right. the creative, um, a creative kind of application of our knowledge in practice and so sure. it's knowing being and doing and right. you know I, I think nursing is this soul to soul or energy spirit energy spirit right. connection that happens and so right. I you know I I guess when I saw that one diagram with um I think you said that um, Dr. Tanioka created where yes there's a healthcare, we start with the healthcare robot and then it's transformed to the nursing robot, I think. Right. So 
So yeah. that's, just, that's what I'm kind of, and I, I, maybe your comments about that, you know, would yeah be helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. I I remember very well our our initial discussion, Marlene. You talk about but robots do not have souls. I, I remember that very well. And so um, this was early on, probably in 20, 2015. Yeah. And, or 2016, right? So, but, uh, and, and I remember that very well, and I always, I'm concerned about that. And so the idea is, the idea is um, uh, humanoid. Okay, the word humanoid only refers to the idea that perhaps the person, the, 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 the person, the robot's physiognomy uh, may look like uh, a human being. And I don't know why it has to be that. And actually we have to look at, we have to read uh, uh, Masahiro Mori's uncanny valley uh, theory, because that actually uh, speaks to the idea of uh, uh, how robots should look like, all right? And the idea that the more human they look, the more people think they are robots, okay? They are artificial. Now, um, do we need, and this is, maybe I'll answer your question with a question or your comment with another comment, right? But do we need, to really have um, uh, robots that look like human beings, okay? Um, from a from a, from somebody uh, who does not who is not in nursing, uh, this may be their answer because that is how uh, they image the nurse, right? Uh, the nurse must look like a nurse, right? In fact, a lot of these humanoid nurse robots are are look like a uh, female uh, or I would say uh, a, a woman, okay? Uh, so that's that's how it's being um, imaged, and it goes back to how we are um, uh, imaged from that so, so, from society's perspective, and so it we have to do something about it. Okay, where is nursing? How when people come to the to hospital settings for the matter, um, how who do they see? What do they see? And uh, what what is, is is nurses? Are our nurses really? Only about doing, and do they do other other um, other ways so that they can express uh, their 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 nursing? So um, perhaps that trans that transition from healthcare robots to nursing robots um, um, may or may not occur, right? Um, maybe it will continue to be simply healthcare robots all the way. If the perspective is that robots are only are only uh, to help uh, or to assist nurses uh, in their practice of nursing. But um, I, I think how effective computers and quantum computers are now are now gaining, um, are reaching a, a, a portion of singularity. There, um, there may be some, some point in, in the idea of uh, advancing AI that, that, the, that the thinking, the decision-making perspective based on programs um, that that is fed into uh, robots may be influencing how how we are going to be perceived as supposedly practicing nursing. So um, uh, I I want I don't want to say uh, let us let us just wait all right but we should be proactive and uh, not reactive. So that's uh, I think that another another challenge in the future. So. Uh, that's really uh, a, a concern, and, and thank you for that, Marlene. Thank you. Um, Dr. Shanafer Savina has her hand up. Oh, I just wanted to jump in <coughs> on this conversation that Marlene yes. brought up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've, I'm relating to the term nurse assistant. We've yes. had, you know, for a hundred years, we, uh, many years, we've had nursing assistants. And uh, nobody thinks the nursing assistant is the nurse. At least uh, nursing assistants are uh, prepared to explain, no, that's that's nursing role. That's beyond the scope of my uh, practice. So mm. what I'm saying is the phrase humanoid nurse robot doesn't say the robot is a person or even has all the characteristics or the most, uh, the most person-like characteristics of a person. Humanoid sure. means they're not human, mm. it's human-ish. 
<laughs> yeah, human niche would then, be a good one, right? And then you've got at the end, other end of that phrase, you've got the word robot. So again, nobody is saying that's a person. The label itself says that's a robot. I think uh, maybe what bothers not only Marlene, but a lot of people and me, remember when I asked you if a robot should be baptized and have their first communion? Kind of a joke. <laughs> we had a good discussion about that. But um, um, there's actually a, a, a relevant, Sabina, sorry to, to, to cut you, but there's actually a relevant question. Therefore, if we have humanoid nurse robots, will they, will they have to undergo a, a licensure exam? Uh, it might be funny, but that's, that's a legitimate question, don't you think? No, I think there should be, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Ways to evaluate the effectiveness of a I robot. Agree. And that's, yes. that, that's some of the work that I think uh, Dr. Tanioka's team is doing. Yes. Yes, you're, you're right. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's an interesting point, Savina, because what happens if a robot is involved in a sentinel event in a hospital <laughs> setting, you know, if, if uh, their actions contribute to a negative outcome, you know, what does that look like? Absolutely, yeah. and there have to be standards. Yeah. I think there are standards in Europe, aren't there, Nino? Yes, there, there are. Because the, the main question is who is responsible? The 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 rope the maker of the robots or those who purchase the robots, right? Uh, so this this these are uh, is it the hospital that is that is responsible? So who will the patient sue? Will it be the hospital or the or the maker of the robots? So it's it's a it's a, a legitimate question uh, because of because there are instruments, right? Um, or they're machines, they're right? Um, Dr. Suryaga Armia wants to ask to talk to you, Nino. Yeah, sure. Hi, Dr. Armia. I'm glad you have the setting in Baguio from yeah, uh, hi. Big Cold there. Well, anyway, <laughs> how question. Yeah. Since we uh, bring this up yeah. today one time about the humanoid robots, is there a study yes. that uh, we uh, that has been conducted about the prevalence of the use of humanoid robots in the actual hospital setting or where this? And is there a study that about the safety so far of the use if they were adopted really? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, in developing countries, uh, healthcare robots uh, are, are available. I, I think it's in, in some developing countries as well, right? Developed countries surely will have uh, will have robots in many uh, many types of robots. Okay, uh, you can have a general classification or called healthcare robots, and there are many. Uh, we have been using uh, ro robots, robotics, right? Um, with um, um, what electronic health records. Those are all robotics, right? We have been using um, pneumatic tubes. This it's still robotics. It's 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 technology, and guided by AI. And so technology and AI always go together. But the the prevalence uh, that is what you're asking, right? Um, uh, how prevalent uh, are, are robots being used in in hospital settings? Um, that 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 is a, a gargantuan task to really look at uh, how what are they. Uh, it, but it may be it may need it may be it, it is information that really is required for us to know because because we're talking about the uh, use a a a, a strong word to, to, to you to look at the invasion of technology in human in healthcare settings uh, we may need to know exactly how in hospital settings uh, but then the idea is how valuable or what will be the value of knowing this uh, information so um, that's probably needs to be done um, uh, and you can compare developing countries from developed countries and that's probably how um, the value can be uh, instituted. So thank you for that question. Thank you. Dr. Loxon, I have a question. We spent a fair sure. amount of time in faculty assembly today talking about our responsibilities in teaching telehealth competencies in mm. the new essentials. I wonder how your theory um, influences that discussion. What are your thoughts about telehealth? 
yeah oh I, I i am an advocate for for telehealth all right um uh, because because um it it allows us to to extend ourselves into um some of the areas of of practice where uh, the the theory especially uh the technological knowing uh, can can be can be more expressed um well uh in in, in telehealth settings um physical physical presence um face to face uh, presence can be can be uh, eliminated and yet enhanced right by using technology we now have excellent uh, sensors excellent uh, ca cameras and um uh, combined with um, with the combined with um, artificial intelligence, you can have all these technologies that the, the, the person does not have to be inside the physician's um, uh, unit or in the nursing uh, station for that matter. And remember, it's very costly to be in hospital settings nowadays. Uh, we don't really need to have um, all these all these patients in hospital settings, right? And that probably becomes the the um, the answer to to this nursing shortage, right? Um, instead of having instead of having one is to twelve patients, right? In in the healthcare uh, unit, right? We may have twenty four uh, patients in the uh, twelve in their homes or and twelve in the units or something like that because of tele tele nursing, right? Uh, grounded in telehealth uh, processes. So that's uh, I, I am all for it actually, and then you have smartphones that really um, look at uh, prevention. Okay, and I think uh, I always look at these three things. Um, uh, the niche for nursing will be um, early intervention, uh, illness prevention, and health promotion. So if we have those three areas um, covered uh, by telehealth and telenursing, I think we'll be we'll be fine. Keeping persons healthy is probably our niche. Thank you. Thank you for that, actually. Thank you. Thank you for that um, question. As far as nursing education is concerned as well. Thank you for that, um, Terry. You're welcome. We have a couple of students with us. If you may not sure. have any questions or but feel free to dialogue with Dr. Loxit if if you'd like to share any thoughts. Anybody else? My my thoughts were already covered by everybody else. Uh, that was the biggest thing that I was concerned about was the accountability. If there was any mistakes, who's who's responsible, right? Yeah, is it is it the, exactly. uh, the the maker of the robot, or is it the purchaser, or is it the user, right? Um, because that's the, that's uh, even be the even programmer even, as well. Uh, oh, and the programmer, very good. Yeah, that's that's really true. So, uh, in fact, um, I think that's why. We should have an added course, all right, uh, in 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 our nursing curriculum. It should be about uh, robotics in in nursing, um, um, engineers, robotics and engineering. Why why do we have? We should be able to troubleshoot um, our robots. Um, and I think uh, we need to really look at that uh, and and be concerned about um, having having nurses' uh, ability. To really troubleshoot uh, robots and, um, and and technologies with AI in healthcare settings, um, that should be uh, a revision to the curriculum. I, I hope it's being uh, considered now. Right, so, Dino. You know, just taking that a little further, I've often thought that with simulation, when the fidelity, yes. the realism, is not um, accurate, with mm. when nursing educators use that. It, is there the potential for litigation in the future if there's a negative impact on a patient when fidelity was not utilized when educating <laughs> using simulators? Right. I mean, I, that that has been my question uh, ever since we started talking about uh, we're talking about simulation technology uh, as taking over some of the practice hours uh, in in healthcare settings because then. Uh, I have yet to see studies that that um, that uh, uh, that is from a patient's perspective. How are they? How are nurses practicing nurses practicing nursing in healthcare settings when educated using these technologies? So I think that's a translation portion of it, 
And so um, that, that actually is a corollary, corollary to your to your question. Uh, so we need to do to really do something about the fidelity and the translation as well. Or even within the COVID pandemic, when there were less face-to-face -face opportunities for education overall, what is the long-term impact on patient outcomes? Because yes. there were more, there was more virtual education or simulated experiences. Exactly, and that's I, I, one of the things that I that that that's being done in the Philippines, for example, is they are they are. Um, they are increasing orientation programs um, in, in in healthcare settings. So uh, allowing allowing uh, new nurses to really uh, hone in their skills uh, so that they become more technologically competent in the practice of nursing. All right, and so hoping that uh, technological competency as caring in nursing becomes the the foundation for um, for the practice. Um, and in other uh, institutions, um, I, I, I know they, they are increasing their number of um, uh, orientation days and, and in, enhancing their, um, uh, uh, allowing nurses, uh, especially recent graduates, to really practice uh, in, in skills labs, for example. And I think uh, the College of Nursing may be able to offer that um, uh, uh, before they, they go to the hospital and make a, a a proposal for, so I would say, Boca Raton Regional Hospital, uh, when they hire new nurses, that they can come to FAU and then, you know, facilitate their their learning more uh, in terms of uh, beginning skills. I don't know. It's just just dawned on me that we can probably make a, a it can be an entrepreneurial activity as well. Anybody else? Want to jump in here before we allow Dr. Luxon to go back to sleep? <laughs> Nina, I just want to say hello, and I sure miss you, buddy. Hi, hi, Catherine. Hi, how are you? Good. Retiring in May, Good. we'll 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 communicate. Sure, sure, we should. Yes, I know. Yeah, she's an example of using technology to count down her retirement, Dr. Luxon. <laughs> Don't give her the opportunity to share that. Just just keep it talking. <laughs> Let's go back to your theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anybody else? Wonderful job. You know, I hope you will read the comments in the chat box, lauding. Oh, your expertise. yes, I will. Thank you so much. Okay. We're so grateful. All right. Well, this has been a pleasure. And thank you so much for inviting me. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, thank you, we'll, Nina. So okay. great. Thank you. All right. We do Take miss care. you, Nina. We miss you. Yeah. Yeah. Same Good here. You. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. Oops, I don't know how to get, okay, here you are. Yeah, you just have to hit the leave. Okay. You got it. Righty. Thank you, Dee. Oh, you're very welcome. It was wonderful. All right. You know, just having this discussion this morning, uh, you know, whereby the, the uh, uh, scholars were presenting about telehealth and how critical that's coming now. And, yes, uh, and then having Nino support that idea from the perspective of healthcare uh, promotion and disease prevention, that kind of thing. Not just for within nurse practitioner education, but within the whole sphere of nursing education. Dee, I have to go run committee on faculty, but I wanna let you know that there's a graduate nursing student that wants to have an opportunity to dialogue with you and a member of the National